all to around, across the province for our re regularly scheduled uh, Newfoundland Labrador English School Board meeting. Um, welcome everybody, welcome trustees from across the province. Good number of uh, study sessions over the last, last day. Um, what I am gonna do, I'm gonna start off a little differently today than I normally do with the, with the meeting. I'm gonna uh, read a statement and uh, then we'll proceed into the regular, uh, the regular board meeting as we normally do. The board and the district remembers and honors the losses of the 215 children found at the former residential school site in Kamloops, BC, as well as all of those who have been Im impacted by residential schools throughout Canada. In honoring their stories, we offer our support to the families and communities and commit to doing better. When staff and students wear orange, it is in recognition of the harm the residential school system did to children's sense of self-esteem and well-being, and as an affirmation of our commitment to ensure that every child matters, we encourage everybody to reflect on the actions and commitments that we can make as individuals and as school communities moving forward. To learn about residential schools, to learn about reconciliation and reconciliation actions, to learn about the indigenous people of Newfoundland and Labrador, to, to learn about indigenous cultures, traditions, history and language, to increase awareness of indigenous peoples so that we can decrease racism, to embedding indigenous voices and perspectives in our school environments. We will continue to reflect on our journey and take actions that continue moving this forward. So please join me in a moment of silence just to reflect. Thank you. So now we will proceed with the, the regular meeting. So can I get a motion to accept the agenda as presented? Moved by oh. Trustee Wayne, seconded Second. by uh, Tom. All in favor? Aye. Those against? Motion carries. Thank you very much for that. So the first item of business, and as I say all the time, all these documents are circulated prior to the meeting, so the trustees have already, already had a chance to review it. So consideration of the minutes of the board meeting of April 24th. 2021. Any errors or omissions? Give you a second. Hearing none, can I get a motion to accept the minutes as presented? Moved by Pam, seconded by John George. All in favor? Those against? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, one of the pieces, uh, there is a business arising piece that came out and it deals with Bayview primary closure, there's a motion, and I will defer the floor to uh, the Vice Chair Wayne Lee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, um, and good afternoon. I would uh, note that this issue has been discussed in the working session, so the preamble will be rather brief, but the trustees have been up to date, updated rather than there has been discussion. A notice was presented to the board <clears throat> on November 21st, 2020, that a motion would be brought to the board to vote on the closure of Bayview Primary. The Bayview Primary is in Nippers Harbor, has not had any students in attendance, is at least the amalgamation of the Newfoundland and Labrador English School District in 2013. Maintaining ownership and control of the building and land therefore poses a liability to the district while achieving no benefit. The town of Nippers Harbor has expressed interest in acquiring the building and property from the district. However, before this transfer can be executed, the school needs to be formally closed. The notice of motion to close was posted to the community on April 26, 2021, inviting input from anyone in the community on the potential closure. No one expressed interest in providing any feedback. As such, I bring the following motion. Whereas Bayview Primary in Nippers Harbor has not had children in attendance since at least June of 2013, and whereas maintaining ownership and control of the building and land therefore poses a liability to the district while providing no benefit, and whereas the town of Nippers Harbor has expressed interest in acquiring the building and property from the district to use for community purposes, be it therefore resolved that Bayview Primary will close effective June 12, 2021. Mr. Chairman, I so move. Thank you, 
Thank you, Wayne. Uh, can I get a seconder for that motion? Seconded by uh, uh, Jean. A any discussion? Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Those against? Motion carries. Thank you for that. Thank you, Wayne. Next item of business is the uh, number five, which is the director's report. Tony? Thank you, Chair. Before we uh, get into the formal part of the director's report, uh, I think this is worthy of sharing. Uh, it'll take four minutes of your time, but it's uh, a beautiful uh, effort. Uh, the Holy Heart Chamber Choir launched the first of a two-part musical project this week in concert with Juno-nominated local band Rum Ragged and award-winning composer, arranger, and musician Bill Brennan. The music video, The Banks of Newfoundland, was released Thursday. This project was made possible through a $10,000 grant from the Bruno Center for Excellence in Choral Music. Um, it is a, a real testament of our efforts with group, group uh, uh, deep learning, uh, certainly partnerships, leveraging digital, and, and pushing the envelope forward. So without further ado, Clouds do frown. It's then we stand, great danger of our craft being soon run down by some large grey hound of the deep that rushes madly by. It's then that we Entrust our lives to kind providence on high. So uh, special thanks to uh, Robert Colburn and the Chamber Choir. Uh, if you might remember, they, they gave us great relief at the beginning of the pandemic with their O Canada rendition, and now they're leading us out of the pandemic. So great stuff. 
Okay. All right. So I'm going to cover um, an infrastructure update, uh, speak about our Cayenta launch, and then finish off with deep learning. So in the infrastructure update, really good year for some students going back to new infrastructure. In Beta Spare, work is uh, ongoing, and we're expecting that uh, school, which was so terribly destroyed a number of years ago is being replaced and students will move in in September 2021. Uh, in Coley's Point Primary uh, being replaced with new infrastructure Bay Roberts Primary and again uh, aiming to be in that facility for the start of the new school year. We have a Cornerbrook Bus Depot um, and uh, we're expecting that to be uh, completed anytime soon. Uh, Gander Academy work is ongoing. Um, and uh, the uh, July of 2021, we're expecting the building to be substantially complete, and we're uh, then going to move to uh, uh, be de beginning demolishing the old infrastructure. Paradise Intermediate, again, work is ongoing, and we are scheduled to open in September 2021. So drilling down a little bit, this is a Beta Spare Academy, which will have an enrollment of approximately 200, uh, 51,000 square feet uh, includes all of the modern facilities that you would expect in a, in a new school. Next we have, and there's a good shot, a great place to be. What a beautiful view out the window of one of the new classrooms. In, uh, I mentioned Coley's Point, uh, we have Bay Roberts Primary. Uh, it's located very close to Amalgamated Academy, grades four to nine. Um, it's co-located on the now uh, enlarged by eight acres uh, Amalgamated Academy site. And a couple of shots from interior, very colorful building, equipped with all the latest uh, in IT resources. And we learn from every new design. This one has a universal de design with a level entry, no barriers to access. Great to see. Cornerbrook Bus Depot. Uh, this is, replaces a building that was destroyed by fire several years ago. And Gander Academy. New school incorporates the former gymnasium uh, which was built in 1990, so it's a relatively new structure. Um, it'll accommodate 540 students. It's constructed on the site of the current Gander Academy. The original Gander Academy was constructed in 1957 with an extension built in 1971, and then, of course, the new gym added in 1990. So you've got your 29 classrooms and all of the modern um, facilities associated with new schools, Parking lot will be redeveloped, and of course, the, the former building, less the gymnasium, uh, will be demolished. You can see a section of the older structure there. And beautiful hallway in a bright modern school. State of the art kitchen facilities. Next, Paradise Intermediate, and you can tell this was taken in the Greater St. John's area, given the... Um, it's, uh, it's adjacent to the municipally uh, owned uh, Diane Whalen Soccer Complex, which the students will be able to avail of, which is a great location. 
It's based uh, off the design of Waterford Valley High, which many of you may be familiar with. Uh, but it was constructed in a youth manner using the tilt-up method, where it's built on the ground and then tilt up. That was a really uh, excellent construction to observe. Um, so basically, they, they poured the concrete walls, and then they uh, erected by tilting it up with the use of cranes. It'll be a great facility. This is uh, the gym in progress. And a glimpse of in the interior with the modern recessed lockers uh, and, a, and a great open hallway. We've also taken, as this is a new school, taking in a new population from uh, existing schools, uh, we elected to put an administrative team in place now to begin the, the final preparations and planning. And that is uh, Stephanie Snow as principal and Sharon Farrell have been designated as the assistant principal. And they're up and running and ready to go. And really happy about starting the September new school year in the new facility. Okay, shifting now to uh, Kayenta implementation. So Kayenta is a, essentially a financial system that will go live on July 5th. It'll be a significant milestone for the district and for schools. It's fully integrated financial management system. It's specifically designed for school districts and provides more robust automated audit trail and accountability. Functionality is expected to make processes more efficient for all users, both district and school level. The final phase of integration of Kayenta, payroll, and human resources has been launched and will be completed over the year. The end result will be a more efficient and much needed modern end-to-end -end enterprise solution that manages the education system of the province. Even with the challenges and additional work of navigating uh, the pandemic, the team is on schedule and on target with the project. Now you've all heard a lot about deep learning and uh, I won't dive into the, the exact details of everything that we've done around deep learning. I have a summary video that I'll play at the end uh, which captures some of where we are. It's really important to master the six C's, you know, creativity, collaboration, communications, uh, critical thinking, and then of course citizenship and character uh, as part of deep learning. And we've done a, a great deal of effort in, in year one of implementation. Uh, and there'll be a bunch of other schools added to the list next year and the year after as we complete this three year uh, piece, which will be ongoing afterwards. We really want to do the best for our students and make them able to meet the challenges that are yet, some of the, the world problems that have yet to be exposed uh, need to be solved by these people that uh, will eventually inherit uh, the work environment, uh, all of our services, and uh, curiosity, independent, thoughtful, productive citizens is our aim. We know that the modern workforce is going to require skill sets well beyond traditional capabilities. And having the ability to adapt for tasks and occupations and roles that are yet unknown is a huge piece of deep learning. This um, video I'm about to show, again, it's, it's uh, not a long video, and it's really centered around two schools and some student voice, but it, it does exemplify some of our progress this year. Their project is to choose one of the United Nations goals for sustainable development and using their physics knowledge to date combined with their knowledge of other subjects to propose a solution to a global issue. So they will be engineering prototypes of their solution and pitching it in a Dragon's Den style. So it's gonna be like an exhibition. So the best part, all learning goals were student driven and decided. To have put together a quick one minute glimpse into the work that my grade nines, 2204s and 3204s have done so far this school year. 
While you're watching, I'd like you to take note of the depth and the range of the work that these students have created. Each time I work with my students to create a learning opportunity, I think it's, set, it's best to set the bar a little higher, and they can ten, continue to step up to the challenges with smiles and enthusiasm, as you see. We create a collaborative space in the classroom and we open up a doc or whatever they suggest at the moment and we write goals for the week. Then the students select where their interest lies. So for if we look at my current deep learning project or our uh, current deep learning project, which is on improving the community. And Friday afternoon after school, they're going out and working on this project in groups. And that, that's nothing that I've prompted. They're just so excited to do that. And then all of a sudden you have the community talking about it. And then you have um, the parents and families wanting to help. And we have our school council involved. And then like, it's just growing constantly. And um, it's been a real eye opener for me as an educator. and um i'm more involved and more excited so what society might not always know or realize or see is that our economy is changing and it's changing fast so we now need creative innovative thinkers in the workforce and the fact that we are now training students for jobs that might not exist is very real. But when you say good at so, learning, good at life, these skills then of advocating for yourself, advocating to improve for others, being a part of a community, a great citizen, they really do transfer into the rest of their lives. But they're now experiencing it right now. And what's more meaningful than that? So then once you learn that type of learning, um, you know, it's not all sunshines and rainbows. Um, we, we don't get everything we ask for. We're learning resilience, uh, you know, teamwork and citizenship. Um, they just, they're already good at learning, good at life because they're being exposed to that now. And like I said, after you, you do create that kind of atmosphere in your classroom where you're working together or independently, you have choice, you know that your voice matters then it's, it's very difficult to revert back to something that's un unauthentic. So like there's so much op opportunity for each student to succeed. And if they don't know something, like if they don't know how to use Minecraft for education, for example, they will either, they know how to advocate to ask a peer or ask Miss for help. And so, um, and, and also, like I, I need to mention this, some students choose somewhere where they're comfortable, but slowly, once their social emotional needs are met and they feel, I can do this, they are more likely to step outside and try something different. And that can't come from the teacher saying, you know, I need you to do this because The number one thing I like is how we are allowed to take a project and turn it into literally anything and it will help us in the future without reading from a textbook and writing it on paper because that does get boring after a while. And you might think, oh this is only one class, like what class is it classified as? It's classified as many, we've done math in it, we've done English, we've done social studies, we've done religion, we've done so much in this class, in this project. And it seems so fun, and it seems like the time passes so quickly. And I also like how the students can take a project and make it into this big thing. 
And it is really amazing how we have came up with such good ideas and the teachers have helped us, but it is our project. I've learned a lot doing deep learning projects this year. Not only learning about a new math skill or learning how to write a formal letter, but I've learned a lot about myself and my classmates. I've also learned a lot more about real life. Our current deep learning project is based on how can we improve our community use of current. Crazy, right? One of our ideas was to install a crosswalk, but we learned it is much harder than just taking paint and painting lines on the road. I'm really proud of all the work we've accomplished so far. There's no way I could pick. We've sent several letters and had even had meetings talking about our projects. For example, we had a meeting with our MHA. I am really happy with how much deep learning projects teach you, and I am so lucky to be taking part in them. Changing to the deep learning, we're doing so many more projects, group work, not so much focused on assignments and more on projects. And so it feels like you're doing really hands on. And I know, like, once you graduate and you go out of high school, you're not going to be sitting down trying to memorize something just to go write a test. You're going to be working and collaborating with other people. You're going to be learning and applying what it is that you're actually taking the time to learn. And I find for me that that was the biggest change. My biggest, biggest problem is that I second guess myself way too much. And so this year, with collaborative group work, I definitely gained confidence with knowing that I knew what I was doing. I'm definitely the type of person that understands a topic better when I explain it to other people. So working within a group, if someone doesn't necessarily understand it as well, and I actually kind of understand it, then we work together to... We, we figure it out by working together, and that helps me. facing and um, you know what does learning look like in the future well you know it's it's certainly changing so if we're doing what we've always have done you know we 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 when we know better we do better and I truly feel that I, I now know a different way to learn and I've seen the benefits and so I want to continue down this path um, and I you know when I listen to the feedback from the students, I know they too want to. And that's, that's very, very evident from everything. This is the way school should be. And spreading it around and trying it out makes a difference. And you students will thank you. Okay, so... Um, this is, this folks is what the purpose of a district is. This is our purpose, to build capacity for this type of learning to take place, uh, to give permission for this type of learning to take place. Um, it's about letting go control, the giving guideposts, but letting go control of the system so that teacher autonomy can flourish, that student choice is so integral to success, that they collaborate on solving real world problems, big, small, in their community. Uh, this is something that a Carolyn Bennett can lead in a small community like Swift Current or a medium sized community uh, with uh, the students at Crescent Collegiate, with uh, the physics teacher. Lindsay, uh, or a large high school in St. John's like Holy Heart of Mary. doesn't matter. The student voice you heard in this is completely unscripted, not guided. It's their voice, authentic. Um, the curricular outcomes are still covered, but these students are focusing on learning, as I'll quote one of the students, on learning versus memorizing. And this is a revolution in education. And it's going to create individuals in this province who will be able to lead into the future and, uh, and make this province the very place, best possible place to live in and contribute to the world. Some of these videos and vignettes that uh, were 
using are being shared around the world, are being used in training sessions in places like Ecuador or New Zealand or the Southern California states. Um, it's incredible effort. I'm proud to be a part of it. Um, at the end of the day, uh, good at learning, good at life is going to hold our students in good stead, and I think we're going to bear uh, the fruits of this well down the road, and we just need to keep our focus on it and support it. Uh, thank you for board support. Um, and if I can conclude as well, uh, this year, uh, coming out of a pandemic, has been a tremendous effort on the part of a, uh, I'll, I'll channel um, Churchill a little bit here, when he talks about never has uh, so much been owed by so many to so few. Um, our teachers, our teaching learning assistants, our administrators, all of the people that support in corporate services were able to uh, be agile and nimble in doing the very best possible for our students in this last uh, year of challenges. Very proud to be the CEO associated with people like that. So, and thank you for the board support. Mr. Chair, so ends my director's report. Subject to any questions. Any questions around the table? Uh, Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Tony, the inspiration for these projects, does it come exclusively from the students? And uh, the, the slide, the, the topic that you referenced, the learning versus memorizing, I saw it on one of the slides. And that's a pretty complicated and complex subject. Uh, compared to some other stuff, and uh, is that something that students would have identified as an issue and, and put some work into it, or would have been prompted by staff? Oh, there, there's a collaboration here that happens between the teacher and the student. Um, the very best projects and the very best processes are those that come from students, guided by their teachers. Um, like any, uh, the other aspect of this that I should have referenced is we're encouraging failure in this. In other words, it's okay to, to go down one direction. You heard an, an example earlier uh, today where students went to start a problem, thought they had a solution, only to run up against reality and to start over. And that's okay. We're encouraged. Failure is an option. So sometimes uh, the, the student voice is, is better for the students to own it, try it, fail, go back with teacher guidance, try again, and move forward. So. Um, if it's done correctly, now the teacher is guiding the effort. It can't be frivolous activity. It has to be towards something that is going to look after um, the, the curricular outcomes that are expected to meet. So it's not a free-for-all. I think, I, I think you heard, uh, it may have been Miss Bennett in that video, talk about it's, it's, not all, it's not all sunshine, not all easy. Some of this is hard work, uh, and some frustrations are there. but. At the end of the day, the, the students are happy. Uh, you heard one student, uh, I think, say, it's so fun. Um, and we want learning to be fun. We want students to be engaged. And uh, we're really only starting, uh, but already some of the exemplars that we're creating, as I alluded to, are being shared across a global network. Uh, the things that are happening here are being recognized. Uh, we're very proud of it. But it's not a competition. We're also taking things from Ottawa or Australia. Uh, we've been in numerous sessions with teachers from around the globe. They've got good ideas. We've got good ideas. We take them back. Um, but, the, but to answer your question directly, uh, the students having a huge say on the front end of the type of projects they're engaging on is, is really critical. Thank, thank you, Tony. I would say from my point of view, and I have said it before, that uh, uh, sometimes when you're involved in uh, organizations and you're working your, yourself to get a, to achieve a goal, and then the organization themselves presents a picture that you say, okay, what's going on here? What, what's, what, is something happening that I'm not totally and utterly aware of? And we always focus on student engagement and trying to make the curriculum more relevant to the students so that they can work in a, a current field that is something that's actually going to provide employment. And what I can say as a, as the chair of, as long as I've sat in this chair, there's something exciting happening and I can see it by the fact that students are getting excited and are engaged again, but also just as importantly, teachers are getting excited 
and engaged again, with some even not going through the phases of retirement, delaying retirement, because they've come to a place where that sort of uh, post-university or post-thing excitement about being in a classroom with kids is coming back into the program. Not only are the teachers getting excited, parents are starting to tie in. We're coming up with new relationships with different members of our sort of school communities that allow us to connect. So I, I must say, Tony, I thank you for your leadership with your senior crews right the way through the system on this. I, I, I think it speaks for itself when you get over up to a thousand teachers volunteering to do PT, PD, rather than having to, you know, suggest that they do it, means that they're engaging and that's because they want to engage. Everything goes further, lasts longer, and is better when you've got a team that's actually getting involved in the, in the process. So again, thank you for your efforts in this, and it's certainly something that we need to make sure continues down the road, and something that'll certainly place Newfoundland and Labradorians in high regard right across, the, right across this country in the future. Thank you for that, Tony. Um, the next piece on our uh, agenda is the uh, committee reports. The only uh, out of 6.1, 6.2, and 6.3, it's the Finance Committee that's had a session in between this and the last meeting. So I'm going to turn the floor over to Steve Tessier, the Chair of the Finance Committee, for the report. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is, uh, I've got four recommendations, three in the blanket, coming out of the Finance and Operations Committee meeting from June the 8th of uh, 2021. Uh, before I get into that, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank uh, Trustees Wayne Lee, Winston Carter, John George, Guy Elliott, and Ray Bennett for their time during that meeting and uh, the great discussions that we had uh, to uh, get to this point. Of course, uh, Terry Hall and his staff uh, for the extremely heavy lifting uh, and uh, all the hard work that they've done over the last while trying to keep us all afloat and making sure that the, uh, the kids are looked after and that the schools are in good shape. And, uh, Really, we all, as a board, appreciate that. So thank you to you and your team, Terry. Uh, the first recommendation coming out of the uh, Finance and Operations Committee report is uh, the Lind Avenue in Grand Falls, Windsor. Uh, this is a quick claim. These are basically housekeeping items, uh, Mr. Chair, that uh, involve some properties that, uh, that the, uh, tr uh, the board no longer requires. Uh, the first one is a motion that the board approve a quick claim on the former board office property uh, on Lind Avenue in Grand Falls, Windsor, uh, as recommended by the Finance and Operations Committee, subject to ministerial approval. So moved. Thank you, Steve. Seconder, John George. Questions? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? Those against? Motion carries. Thank you, Steve. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the second one is uh, the purchase of some new vehicles. Uh, the district operates about 60 vehicles in its fleet. Uh, some of these vehicles are getting uh, what I call long in the tooth, uh, basically 1999s, and the, the cost of repairs of the uh, transmissions and engines is becoming more than what the vehicle is actually worth. So uh, every once in a while we have to replace them. Um, so this is a motion to uh, purchase some new vehicles for the province uh, to make sure that the uh, staff have something safe to drive in and making sure that they, get, they have the ability to do their jobs properly. Uh, so the motion is that the board approve the borrowing of uh, $575,000, that's HST included, uh, to finance uh, service vehicles as recommended by the Finance and Operations Committee, subject to ministerial approval. So moved. Can I get a seconder? Wayne Lee seconds. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? Those against? Motion carries. And again, the uh, this uh, next motion is uh, regarding the school review policy, and it's cleaning up some of the legal language inside of the, that policy itself uh, in regards to the definition of what a school is. We have a couple of buildings around the province that are uh, no longer schools uh, in, in terms of they have no children or no teachers or no principals or no staff operating them. So uh, in, in, in virtue of that, we have to just change some of the language here to make sure that we can dispose of the assets. Um, the motion is that the board approve the addition of the following definition of the policy, uh, Gov-104, school review, school review, uh, school per schools act 1997. So moved. Can I get a second? Or Wentz Carter seconds. Discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Those against? Motion carries. Thank you. And then just a blanket recommendation that the, the board approve the Finance and Operations Committee report of June the 8th, 2021, as presented. So moved. Seconder. Seconded by Wince. Carter. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Those against? 
Motion carries. Thank you, uh, Steve. Thank you for the work that you've done there. That complete, completes, completes the uh, committee report section on the standing committees. Uh, new business, uh, we're, we're going to get a report from the Education Foundation, and it's going to be uh, presented by our newly minted uh, chair, Trustee Butt. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the Newfoundland Education Foundation uh, met on May 5th via Zoom. And our, I'm, I'm just going to summarize the main points from the meeting. Um, the first uh, order of business was a call for a nomination for chair. Uh, Mr. Thomas Kendall had kindly filled the position as chair of the Newfoundland Labrador Education Foundation Board for the past two years. Thank you very much, Mr. Kendall. Um, so as uh, an election of a new chair was required uh, by the uh, NLEF bylaws, which indicate the term for the position of the chair is two years. Um, so Terry Hall proceeded as acting chair to oversee uh, the nomination process. Um, I was the only one nominated, and I accepted the nomination and consequently the position of chair. And I'm looking forward to that over the next couple of years. Um, we, the first order of business, we, uh, the next order of business, excuse me, was a discussion item, and we were presented with the results from a thought exchange for future funding considerations for the foundation. Um, student inequity was highlighted as an issue during the development of the district's 2020 to 23 strategic plan. As a result, the district included an indicator to address inequities through a review of the allocation model of funds dispersed by the Education Foundation. So the district conducted that thought exchange in January 2020 in order to gain feedback on the disbursement of funds collected from the staff 50-50 uh, payroll. And this report can be accessed via a link uh, that's provided in your document that was provided to all of us, uh, Elaine provided all of us in our uh, package. The report provides an overview of participants and their interest in joining the payroll deduction and areas that they feel are worthy of support uh, with the funds that are collected. So the couple of initiatives that I will get to now stem from feedback from the employees via the, that thought exchange process. And uh, it's actually hoped that these changes to the disbursement of the NLEF funds uh, may entice more employees to actually join the 50-50 draw and increase our uh, funds available for disbursement. Um, so then we moved to our new business, and that was the scholarship applications for 2021, 2020, 2021, excuse me, and the grant applications for the 2021-22 year. Um, so I just want to, uh, a couple of motions came out of that and they were presented and, uh, and carried and I just want to give you a little bit of background on them. Um, for this school year, 2020-21, it was proposed that we establish 36 scholarships at $1,000 each with eight of those being awarded to students with academic status and eight being awarded to students with general status who are intending to pursue further education. And then the remaining 20 would be awarded as per normal past procedure. And the breakdown for awarding to each region is as follows. 13 for the Avalon region, nine, <coughs> excuse me, for central region, eight for western region, and six for Labrador region. And the option to add up to five scholarships specific to NLESD employees' children will also be considered for implementation if possible. So as I said, that uh, was moved and carried. Um, then next, the grant applications. Uh, a form to implement and proceed with funding requests from schools in the form of grants will be finalized for posting. Uh, the Education Foundation followed this procedure and, was very much pre and it was very much appreciated by schools who were looking for available funding for various educational purposes such as library enhancements, musical instruments, drama, art, science, etc. Uh, felt we could use the same process with deep learning initiatives being the main point of focus. We would have each school apply for the funds via a form and submit to the Education Foundation for review and selection with two established deadlines, one for November, which would give the fall grants, and one for March, for the spring grants. 
uh, for each school year. And these grants would be up to $1,000 each, and we would offer 40 grants in total, 20 for each deadline, so 20 in the fall and 20 in the spring. And to be fair, only one grant per school will be permitted in a given school year. And uh, there's also funding that can be considered for lower grade levels, possibility of sponsoring contests such as posters, essays, art projects, etc., and awarding certificates and or uh, awarding amounts in the $50 to $100 range. Uh, so that, uh, just to recap, the two motions that uh, were moved and carried, uh, one, was the Education Foundation Board approves to proceed with the 36 scholarships valued at $1,000 for graduating mm -hmm. NLESD students for the 2021 school year, as presented. And the second one was the Newfoundland and Labrador Education Foundation Board approves the implementation of the 40 grants for schools as outlined, which will be administered beginning November 2021. And that's it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, and I can't uh, thank you for your uh, inaugural uh, presentation, Jean. Um, I can't remember, do we receive that report or no? It's steady go. Thanks a million for that. Obviously, there's a lot of good stuff happening, and it's always good when you have programs that actually reflect the changes in the system that actually allow us to do stuff for the different range of children that we have within the system. What are they, yeah, so that this is a, so certainly a significant step forward. We are now uh, going to go to our milk master. <laughs> Trustee Eric Ayers for the report from the Milk Foundation. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good evening. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, on March 10th of this year, I attended a very brief virtual meeting of the School Milk Foundation. Uh, trustees, you have a, a copy of the minutes of that meeting in your package, so I'm not going to read through the minutes for you. I'm sure many of you read better than I can. Well, just a couple of points I wanted to make. Uh, our new nutrition e education coordinator, and, uh, Andrew, Amanda O'Brien, who is giving presentations virtually to try to enhance milk sales and so on, she had a total of uh, 171 presentations booked up to April 16th of this, right, this particular year. Uh, obviously this year though, school milk sales from September 2020 to January 2021 were down quite a bit. And that was uh, attributed in part to the late start of cafeteria serve, uh, openings due to COVID. And of course, there were many smaller caterers throughout the province who just went out of business, didn't open at all in, in the schools. So milk sales were down. We had a request from uh, Agripur and Saputo, the two milk producers, for a price increase. They requested uh, two cents per 250 mils of both white and chocolate and four cents per 500 mils. Uh, that was discussed, and uh, we passed a, a resolution to give them uh, one and a half cents per 250 mils for 2021, and one cent per 250 mils for 2021, 20, uh, 2021, 2022. Okay, and like the cost, the they request the cost because the removal of the added sugar from chocolate milk and the new products being used in the new formulation were a bit more expensive, so they were asking for a, a price increase. And uh, we, and it's still ongoing, we are, the directors are looking at uh, a harassment prevention plan. Uh, we have that, and we are going through it and suggesting changes or whatever, and that will be up for approval at our next meeting. That's it. Thank Although I, I, would, I would suggest that everybody choose milk as their beverage of choice this afternoon. <laughs> He's drunk the Kool-Aid. Um. <laughs> anyway, I'd, I'd, I'd like to move that the board 
uh, accept that report. Okay. Thank you very much, Eric, for that. Uh, any questions for Eric? Hearing none, can I get a second to accept the report? Seconded by Tom. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those against? Motion carries. Thank you for that, Eric. Next order of business is uh, acceptance of uh, is the uh, board meeting schedule for the year. So, uh, so our uh, vice chair is going to present a motion, basically outlining our schedule for next year. First of all, thank you for the warning. Um, the meeting schedule, as proposed uh, in the document sent around, would be for the. Uh, 2021-22 year from September to June. Uh, I so move, Mr. Chairman, begging a seconder. Uh, seconded by Steve. Uh, discussion. I'm just going to say, as one of the de as one of the deep learning principles, uh, as a trustee sitting around the table, I would sure, sure think you should be prepared for anything. But anyway, uh, I do believe uh, Scott has a question for. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I don't think that you or anybody else would be surprised to hear that I'm going to vote against the proposed uh, most, the motion for the proposed schedule. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure that you're sick of me talking about it because I'm sick of talking about it. Uh, but uh, I think we need to catch up with the times. Uh, everything that happens globally is being done differently, and, and the way we conduct our business as a board has remained the same. Uh, when we started out, we had four meetings. We're up to six, uh, six meetings in St. John's, in-person meetings. Uh, there's, there's several reasons why we should change the way we do things. It's expensive. We spend about $125,000 a year for trustee travel to these meetings. Um, the pandemic has made a lot of difference to the way that some of us are able to get to these meetings. Uh, you know, when, when we started out back in 2016, I could fly out of St. Anthony seven days a week and go back to St. Anthony from St. John seven days a week. Now it consumes as much as four or five days of my time. Uh, so I think that's a consideration. Government has been functioning, you know, virtually, federally. Uh, Health care providers are treating patients virtually. Uh, and we seem to be reluctant to switch to this model, at least a hybrid model uh, of our meeting structure. Uh, the other concern that I have about the way that we do that is, is that it, it eliminates some people from being involved. It's prohibitive. And if, if I were, you know, still raising my family up in northern Newfoundland, uh, and uh, both myself and my wife were working, uh, I wouldn't be able to be involved like the rest of the trustees because the way that we're structured doesn't allow for that. This is a, this is a group uh, that's, the way we do this is designed for people that have left the workforce voluntarily or involuntarily and uh, have the time to commit to it. But to be fully engaged as a parent of school-aged children, if you don't live in the St. John's area, uh, the way that we do this prohibits that. And I think that we should, be, we should be more open to change. One of the slides that we were presented by staff after lunch talked about the words equal and equitable. And I think we should look at, that, at this through that lens. And we'll, we'll all attend six meetings, but it's not done in an equitable way. And I think that we need to change that. Thank you, uh, Scott. You're right. You've spoken eloquently on this issue a number of times over the past. Uh, we've had discussions, de de detailed discussions with all the trustees around the table. And in order to move an organization like this forward, you have to listen to the, the, uh, co the sort of communal wisdom of the full group on how we can move forward. Uh, they have made decisions, the trustees have made a decision on how to conduct our meetings. It's not a requirement for all trustees to be at the table at these meetings. You can, you certainly have your individual right to uh, uh, tie in virtually if you uh, so wish, or you can participate in person because there are certain uh, discussion points that you do need those in person piece, and this gives us the flexibility to do that. So are there any further discussions or commentary before we vote on the schedule? Uh, Kevin. Um, Mr. Chair, I concur with Mr. Burden's analysis here. Um, we had a we had an in-depth look at how much it would cost um, to not do this, and I look at this and I say six meetings in St. John's. The fiscal reality of doing this has to be greater than the fiscal reality of accessing a license which the board owns and is paid for. We all had a discussion here in the last minute yet 
two meetings ago. I wasn't here at the last one. I was on Zoom. Um, and people started saying, yeah, yeah, I've got to drive three hours here. I'm going to spend four days. I've got to spend two and a half hours here and spend two days. And every time it's, we come here and spend two days, well, guess what? Someone's got to pay for our hotels, which is the board, which ultimately is provincial government. Someone's got to pay for our gas and our transportation and our meals. Or we can sit off in our living rooms or our dens or wherever else we want to be and cost the government nothing. And there's my point. Not just that we, are, we, are, we need to be with the times. Not just that, as, as Scott said, yeah, you've got to be somebody who's retired or unemployed to put this time in for someone who doesn't need to be at a job. Look at all the people who could be on this board, who can't be, because they got jobs to do. You're, you're an exception, sir. You have a very patient employer, I must say, to allow you to travel out of Goose Bay as much as you do. And I'm, I'm sure you're thankful for that. But imagine if we were all in that position. That's the piece. I don't mind the, 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 the six meetings. I don't mind the, the actual dates. It's the required location. And let's face it, as Grandway said, we're, we all have the choice to either go on Zoom or come into St. John's. Look at us. We all came to St. John's. But if this schedule said meetings A, B, C, and D, or Zoom, there'd be none of us get off our chairs and come to St. John's. And we'd save the province money. We could take that money and put it into the schools for the children. And there's the point. Thank you, sir. Any, any further trustees like to, okay, Trustee Lee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as usual, we're a victim of geography. The, the province's population is asymmetrical, and the vast majority of the population is on the Avalon. So this is not a new quandary. This is one faced by boards and various other organizations over, the, over time. The only difference between now and the past is the availability of Zoom. Uh, I'm very much afraid, though, that there is a bit of a false equivalency frequently drawn between these. I'm not saying it's being done here, but to say that uh, we are here and uh, we, could, we could be in our living rooms implies that there is an equivalent experience of the two. That is to say, if Ray were online, he would be in his eighth, seventh or eighth hour now looking at a total of 13 hours on Zoom. Simply put, it doesn't work. Um, Zoom has proved to be a boon for smaller groups with very limited agendas, but for the scope and the number of things facing us, it is simply not an equivalent. So therefore, any financial equivalency doesn't hold water. It isn't true at all. We've discussed this at length at, at finance and operations, and the consensus there and the consensus at our board up to this point was but while there are obvious uh, problems with this, it's always been that way and likely always will be. And that the, the best we can do, in other words, we don't want the, the, uh, the perfect to be the enemy of the good. Simply because it can't be perfect doesn't mean we don't go with it. So I'm suggesting that as the uh, Finance and Operations Committee re recommendations go, we stay with the status quo. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Lee. We're going around the table. You've, Scott, you've already had the discussion point that you've had. You've articulated your point, so we want to get everyone now at the table the opportunity to have the same piece. No, I certainly can, and uh, my point is we're giving everyone the opportunity at the table to have their commentary. Did you have a, a comment, John? Yep. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I think we've had this discussion perhaps as a board uh, on a number of occasions, and I guess we'll continue to have it. Uh, we're a volunteer board. If you consider the role of the board, the overall budget that we oversee, 
And if we compare with some of our counterparts across the country, we would notice that, you know, a, a volunteer board for our province is very unique indeed. So in terms of a cost efficiency, uh, I think the taxpayer is getting a, a pretty good uh, bargain for the trustees who, who do sit around this, this table. Uh, I think that, and I speak in favor of the motion, when we look at uh, six meetings that are being proposed in the, in the course of, a, of one year, it seems to be very reasonable. Uh, we strike a balance because we do use the technology that we have available for our committee meetings are all held by Zoom. Our special updates of the board are up are again done through the technology and Zoom. We have the ability to move our board meetings throughout the province if there, are, if there happens to be a need to do so. Um, but we've, when we looked at the cost and why St. John's is listed, because this is our corporate headquarters. This is where our staff is located. We did a cost analysis. And it's much cheaper uh, to hold our face-to-face -face meetings here than it would be to move, move it throughout the province. So, you know, I think the motion and the proposal is that we are, uh, we're striking a balance here. And for six face-to-face -face meetings, and as trustee refer, uh, referenced, uh, you know, if we had to conduct today's business and our study session and uh, by Zoom, uh, I think it would be very, uh, very challenging. So uh, just my thought that I support the motion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any further uh, commentaries from trustees? Trustee Gill. I support the motion as well, following up from Wayne and John. I consider it a privilege to sit on this board. I think the conversations that we have six times a year are it, being able to look each other in the eye is critical to me as a communicator. With respect to um, my ability to be here, I have a child. I have a full-time job. Um, I'm not retired. I take vacation to be here when I need to. And I'm pleased to be here. And I consider it an honor to be here. And the stuff that we do here is worth being here for and having the conversations. If I couldn't get here, I would sit home on my couch and do it on Zoom. But I prefer to look at you all in the faces. That's it. Any further commentary around the table? We're going to go back to you one more time, Scott. Mr. Uh, chair, the, uh, the vice chair, trustee for Zone 6, said that something wasn't true. So if it's not true, I guess it's a lie when you're talking about cost savings. No, don't go looking at me like that. My last travel Point of plane, order, Mr. Chairman, I said no such thing. Can you tell me what you said then, Mr. I said Vice it's Chair. a false equivalency to assume that 13 and a half hours of Zoom is equivalent to a 13 and a half hour face-to-face -face meeting. I did not reference you or anybody else. You Basically. said that it wasn't true. My last travel okay. claim was 1300 bucks, and, and, and to sit home in the basement would have been nothing. We're having a discussion about the motion on the table. Do we have any further discussions about the motion on the table? If not, I'm going to call the vote. What? Yes, there was. Wayne moved the motion to accept the schedule. All right. And the seconder was who, uh, Lane? Trustee Tessier was the seconder. So we've had discussion around the table. I'm going to move the motion. All in favor of the motion? Those against? So two against and the rest of the trustees in four. Therefore, the motion moves forward. Thank you very much. The next uh, item on the business is uh, 7.5, which is the uh, Raymond Ward Memorial, and I'm going to turn the floor to the vice chair. Seven point five refers to Raymond Ward Memorial School in Norman Bay. Uh, seven point five and seven point six have been discussed uh, earlier with the board, so the preamble will be.
perhaps a little shorter than it would be under other circumstances. Raymond Ward Memorial School uh, had one student enrolled as of June of 2020, and that student uh, transferred to Charlottetown to William Gillette Academy, and the parent has indicated that the intention is to re register this child again at WGA in the coming year. As such, there are no students currently attending or registered to attend Raymond Ward in the upcoming year. As such, I bring the following motion. That uh, with regard to Raymond Ward Memorial School in Norman Bay, has not had children in attendance since September 2020, and no students registered for the coming school year, we therefore resolve that Robert Rother Raymond Ward Memorial School in, Re in Norman Bay will close effective June 12, 2021. Thank you, seconder. But seconder of the motion, Guy Elliott. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? Aye. So moved. Thank you. 7-6 refers to Basque Memorial All School, or rather All Grade, which is in Red Bay. Uh, this particular school did have a projected enrollment of two students, but the, the principal has, been, has advised us that the students transferred to Labrador Straits Academy on August the 31st, leaving no current students at the school. There are no incoming students for the school either, and as such, I bring the following motion that Basque Memorial All Grade Red Bay, Newfoundland has not had children in attendance since June 20th, June 2020 rather, and no students registered for the upcoming school year, that is to whereas, be it therefore resolved that Basque Memorial All Grade will close effective June 12th, 2021. Again, begging a second here. Can I get a seconder for the most? Seconded by Tom Kendall, trustee. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Those against? Motion carries. Thank you very much for that. The next uh, component is the uh, incoming and outgoing correspondent. Does uh, any of the trustees have any questions relating to any of that correspondence? As it was included in your package. Yes, Mr. Kendall. Just the uh, land purchase, Exploits Valley High School in Grand Falls, Windsor. Yeah. Could someone please make a comment on that? Are we going to uh, Terry? That's correspondence, which number? Sorry. Uh, yes, this is a uh, little piece of land that uh, we were using an adjacent piece of land that a citizen was graciously letting us use for storing snow to be able to clear a lot. And this citizen is now selling their land. And if we don't uh, move to buy a little strip, it means we need to truck the snow away, and it'll be multiple times more expensive than it is to get a little piece of land from this citizen before they sell. So we, we made the move to, in the, the longer term economic benefit, to buy just a little strip before they sell it so we can store snow. Thank you very much, Terry. You're welcome. Thank you, Tom. Any further questions or incoming outgoing correspondence? Hearing none. Next order of item is a motion to adjourn to close. Moved by Eric, seconded by uh, Pam. All in favor? Those against?